Dini ga Jacobe. James chapter 4. Go Jacobe isa hloko se sine. We are going to read from verses 13 Sizafunda kwishumi nandatu to 17. Siye ku verse le shumi ne sikhombisa. Hallelujah. Can we declare the vision together? And raise them as faithful stewards. If you find the book of James, say Amen. Amen. So we are going to read together from verses. 13 of James chapter 4. Let's read verse 13 together. One to go. Verse 14. Verse 15. Verse 17. Hallelujah. Let's all pray, ask the Lord to give us guidance, give us insight into the word of the truth. Let's pray in Jesus' name. Talk to God. Father, we thank you for the word because your word set us free. Your word show us the way of what you did to do and how we may please you. We pray for your grace, your mercy as we receive from you. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated, beloved. Sinasala <laughs> Eliva Eh Ela gutala Ela siku Eh Siti Tilo Eh Evangel we are looking at the book of James. This book was written by James, the brother of our Lord Jesus Christ. He was a, a leader in Jerusalem, a senior pastor in 
of the church in Jerusalem. And it was written around 62 to 69 uh, AD. And this book was written for the 12 tribes of Christian Jewish believers who were scattered during the time of persecution where a lot of them their faith was shaken so the writer is encouraging the Christians especially those who are going through trials and persecutions to hold on on Christian faith and be able to serve the Lord even when it's tough. So in this portion, we are getting an encouragement, especially for people who have overconfidence about themselves and about what they are going to do. And out of this, we are going to learn how to approach 2020. And how we live our lives in 2020 as Christians. The Lord has already spoken to us about the theme of the year that we we are being transformed in in the image of Christ. That this year we need to be transformed, change into the image of Christ. And we have seen that in Philippians chapter 2 that the Bible encourages us to have the mind of Christ. And we see that the mind of Christ is to humble ourselves and be obedient to God. For the Bible says he humbled himself and he became a servant and served God until death. And if we have to be like Christ, we, we have to look at him. And we have to see what the word of God is saying about him. So that we can imitate uh, his pattern of life. The Bible says, look here you who say today or tomorrow we are going to a certain town and will stay there a year. We will do business there and make a profit. How do you know what, what your life will be like? Tomorrow. Your life is like a morning it's like the morning fog. It's here a little. A little while, then it's gone. And the scripture tells us what you ought to say is if the Lord if the Lord wants us to, wants us to, we will live and do this or that. Otherwise, you are boasting about your own uh, preten pretentious plans and all such boasting, it's evil. 
ngaphandle kwalokho manje niyazibonga ngokuzigabisa kwenu konke ukuzigabisa ubunjalo kubi remember it is sin to know what you ought to do and then not uh, do it ngakho kuyisono ukwazi okumele ukwenze ube se ungakwenzi so this morning i would like to talk on the on the a subtopic under the theme gifuna okukhuluma ngenhloko ndale phansi kwesiqubulo sonyaka ethi not posting about tomorrow singazigabizi ngokwakusasa we living in a time where people are over confident siphila eyinsukwini lapha abantu bame isibindi ngokungafanele and it's as if they are in charge of their lives kungazuthi bangababusi noma bayiphethe impilo zabo and as if as they leave ngazuthi uma bephila they are the one who are in control yibona balawulayo so this morning as we look into the scriptures namhlekiseni sisaba sisabhe kombhalo the bible is calling us to be humble izwile nkosi liyasibiza ukuthi masithobeke to be humble to jehovah the most high ukuthobeka ku jehovah ophakemeyo who is the sovereign lord yena ongusibawode who is seated on the throne ohleze esihlalweni sobukhosi controlling each and every activity that is happening in heaven and on earth and this scripture is calling us into that understanding that it is god who is in control of tomorrow and when we talk about tomorrow we are talking about the future the next day next week next month the year to come or the next year all of us we, are, we were so excited to come into the year 2020 and because we have a lot of plans and we want to do certain things we have plans which is a good thing but it's important to come into the perspective of what the scriptures are saying about that and when we look into the scriptures proverbs chapter 3 verses 28 if it says if you can help your neighbor uma ungamsiza umakhelwane wakho if you can help your neighbor now uma ungamsiza umakhelwane wakho manje don't say ungathi come back tomorrow buya kusasa and then i'll help you bese ngizakusiza from this scripture we see kulombhalo siyabona that make every opportunity you get now ukuthi sebenzisa lonke ithuba onalo manje don't say tomorrow Proverbs chapter 16 verse 9 it says we make our own plans but the lord decides where we will go other translation says the lord determines where our plans will be you see it's good to plan to say i'm going to be married this year i'm going to have a house i'm going to buy the car i'm going to do this and go into. but you need to understand that in your plans you need to put if the lord wills because in all our plans the lord is the one who des- who determines what must come out or not can somebody say amen amen proverbs chapter 27 verse 1 it says don't break about tomorrow since you don't know what the day will bring don't break about tomorrow 
Because you don't know what tomorrow will bring. It's only Jehovah the Most High, the sovereign God, who knows everything that is coming in 2020. So our future is not in our hands. Our future is in Jehovah. So what is the calling? The calling is to humble ourselves and acknowledge that there is someone in charge of every activity that is happening on earth. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 to seven. Listen to what it's saying. It says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This scripture tells us that Christians need not to be anxious about anything. You don't need to stress about what will happen in 2020. What will happen tomorrow? What if this, what if this, what if this? That it should not be our business. The Lord does not want you to be frustrated and find yourself being depressed and uh, you know being oppressed and thinking and worrying about a lot of things now someone can say then what i need to, to do because i can see there are challenges there are problems there and there the lord knows that you are going through problems he has seen it even before but what we are seeing here the bible is calling us if bible to pray that prayer is a solution. It says with prayer and supplication and thanksgiving must be made to God. The one who is in charge. We need, we need to know that our Lord Jesus Christ is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The government is upon his shoulders meaning he is in charge anything that happens the Lord knows he is omniscient he knows omniscience he knows everything he knows everything the Bible says he knows the number of our heads and it says no feather of the bed can fall down without him knowing before it falls. Meaning even your head, the piece of head, to, for it to fall, the Lord has already saw it and permitted it to happen. Let me say this again. Even Satan and demons and witches and wizards, they cannot do anything unless the Lord permit them. So this God, our Lord, who is our Father, He has all power and He is in control. The problem is this. We live here on earth as if 
we are in charge and we have the power to make things to happen and I'm saying here that is a false teaching that is making people to be boastful are we together what we're saying Matthew chapter 6 verse 34 it says this therefore it's our Lord Jesus Christ do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day it is its own trouble. From the scriptures I've read, if we summarize together, it simply means we should not worry about the future. In other words, as we are in the beginning of 2020, it is not our prerogative to worry about what is going to happen next week, February, March, April, June, July. It simply means when coming to our lives, what will happen with it in the future? We should not worry about that. What we need to do, we need to give everything to the owner of life. The one who is in control. Are we together so far? It is natural to talk about tomorrow and things you have planned to do but no one knows if tomorrow will even come will even come for us we do not know that everyone uh, what will happen with them most of the time we got shocked when something happens or somebody dies. So we were with them yesterday. So we think that when you were with somebody yesterday, you will be with them even today. But according to the status of life. It is not like that. We can be together now and it could be the end. Yes. This is life. So I'm saying let's come down. Let's humble ourselves and become who we're supposed to be. Because we are proud. Boastful. The Bible tells us that we should not be boastful. Yes. When you look into the scripture, it is very, very clear. It's, it's, it speaks you know, very strong. It says, look here. You who say tomorrow, today, tomorrow, we are going to do this. I'm going for a holiday. I'm going to marry. I'm going to make so much money. I'm going to buy this. I'm going to do this. We'll do this business. business. Will make so much profit. Maybe you have a business and you tell yourself this year, I'm going to make thousands. I'm going to make millions. I'm going to be a millionaire. The Bible says something. It says, How do you know what your life will be like tomorrow? How? Now, we know that people consult 
fortune tellers which doctors yes, even Christians even Christians they do consult they go to those people to go and consult what is happening some their own horoscope they, are, they search on the newspaper what the stars are saying the Cancerians and the Librans and uh, whatever they call themselves listen if you are a Christian you are not a crap yeah you are not how long control like a life here can crap? Anyege uzula de liswe by the life of a crab. Christians are not supposed to consult horoscope. Ama Christ a born abanta ba yofuni ngebi so abanta ba soli. They might look interesting. Ngabona galanga zuti ya kaza. But Godwa, they are outside the word of God. Zinga pande ways we can God does not want us to consult those things. Ugulu gulu aga food uti si pege si solle glezuti. The same way He does not want us to consult to the spirit of the dead. Jongo ba aga food uti si o pige mazosi. We should not consult to the spirits of the dead. We should not consult to the witch doctors or the fortune tellers. Even on internet, you know, on Facebook, Facebook, there are those apps where it says what will happen to about you tomorrow. Don't attempt to do that because you are actually putting your life into spirits to determine of what will happen to you tomorrow. According to the scriptures, there is no way you can know what will happen with your life tomorrow. Therefore, it should not be your worry. Because you know, if you can be in this addicted to the horoscopes, they will, they will oppress you. You'll come to a point where they decide what dress you must dress. What color you must eat. What kind of food you must eat. The type of people you need to meet. They will control your movement. And yet, when you are a child of God, you need to know that our God is the ultimate and the absolute Lord who is in charge of our life that whatever happens as long as we prayed as long as we pray and we have given to God our heart desires, our needs and everything that which troubles us the Bible says he will give us peace that gives us assurance that all is in, in control are we together, Bazalwa? And we should also know that in Romans chapter 8, verses 28, the Bible says, all things work together for good to them that love the Lord. That scripture means that God works things together to work for good to everyone that is a Christian that love him. If you love him, he will make whatever situation of your life to be for the good. Therefore, Christians need to be happy people. People who don't worry because they cast their burdens unto Jesus who cares for us. There is that song. I like it. It's a militant song. It says, cast your 
guidance unto Jesus, Jesus Christ. for he came for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And step down the devil because he's a liar. Are we together? So this year, beloved, the Lord God Almighty, he is calling us not to boast. Says otherwise, you are boasting about your own pretentious plans. And all such boasting it's evil. The Bible says it's evil. Now, what does it mean to boast? Now, to boast according to Western Dictionary, boasting, it's a statement expressing excessive pride. In one's self. So as a Christian, we don't need to say a excessive statements that shows that we are higher somehow as if we are gods. Are we together? The Bible says, what is, what is man? Because you are just like a, 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 a fog. You know, the, the moisture in the morning. You know, in the morning, ubona poka, ubona ingungu, ikseni. And then after some time, it's gone. That's what the Bible says. A human being is like. A human being, according to scripture, it's like nothing, basically. We are like nothing. Even though we look at ourselves as somebody. Beloved, you know, when you go to the funeral, which is something that really strikes me every time when I go to the funeral, to see a, a, a you know, a top person who had all these things put into the coffin lower down into the ground. I mean, just be covered by soil. You know, I normally think about Elijah. I said, you know, Elijah, he was a real a man. God really demonstrates his power yeah, when a person ungulu, lives for him. Ungulu, ungulu, because that man, when he died, I mean, the chariot of fire came from heaven. And this man sat on the, on the, on the chariot of fire. They went to heaven. What a spectacular. That is a man that will say he could have boasted. But it's not many. It's only, uh, no, uh, we hear about, uh, um, uh, I think it's um, uh, Enoch who disappeared and go to heaven. And we hear about Elijah. And we see the Lord Jesus Christ. The one who is the greatest who just of all. Went like this without parachute. Without anything. And he went to heaven. Now, all of us. We are going to the soil. So, if you don't 
Humble yourself. Uma while you are still alive. Usa pile mshabe. Lifu litlo humble. Isi ifo si ogutobi isa. So it means all of us. Ogushu titi na songe. We need to have that. Gumele sibe na loko. In us. That by the way, Uguti, we really, we, we are really nothing. And when we die here, the maggots are going to eat us. And we are going to be soil again. Yes, our spirits will be in heaven. But in terms of our look and the picture of, of on earth and our bodies, they are all going to die. Is over. And we are all going to the soil. So how we behave. It should be controlled by understanding. Of what God is saying. In terms of our lives. We know. That everyone has a day appointed unto death. And that judgment will follow after. Just to know that you are going to die and then you are going to judgment. In other words, you are going to court. That needs to humble us. Because everything we are doing here on earth definitely you are going to stand before God and answer one day. Whatever you say, whatever you do, in on the phone, wherever it is, God is going to judge you. Amen. Amen. Now, it's important to to learn about this, especially at the beginning of the year. Because we talk compliments, compliments, compliments. Compliments of what? Compliments of doing what? Do we really put God first in our lives? Do we really recognize who we are? We boast. Because of the cars we drive. Because of the clothes we wear. Because of the houses you stay in. Because of the status you have. The degree you have. It makes you to feel like you are more important than other people. Are we really important than other people? Now, the important thing in them that which we have to learn here is that tomorrow is not in our hands. What will happen about when, you when people tomorrow say, so you say, I don't know, and I don't worry, because it's not in my hands. Amen. 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 Tomorrow is not in my hands. I enjoy life. God wants us to enjoy life now. In psychology, they've discovered something. There are a lot of people who are under stress. It's people who worry about the things they've done, the things that have passed, or things that have happened to them. And forty. People worry about what they what, what's going to happen in the future. And they worry. And they ignore living the, for now. Now, it is important. From the scripture we see, the Lord says, we should not worry about tomorrow because tomorrow has its own problems. 
The problems of tomorrow are the problems of 2020 tomorrow. 2020 has got its own bad days. There are problems that will emerge. But it's not my problem to worry about God, them. Why? Because I have the Lord. And the Lord of 2020, He will make a way for my life. Hallelujah. And he knows where I will be. Where I will be, I'll be. For the Lord is the one who guides our lives. So he wants us to live our life total dependence on him. That's why prayer, prayer, it simply says, Lord, I can't do anything. You take control of my life. As I slept, and you wake me up. I don't know what's going to happen during the day. But you who knows the future, give me wisdom. Give me strength. Guide me. Lead me. Show me your way. Then you know as a Christian that you are walking in the path of the Lord and you are respecting that the day you are living in it is God who is in charge. No one knows what tomorrow brings. The only thing that which we know about tomorrow, it is that it's uncertain. Is that it's uncertain at best. It's uncertain at best. We do not know what is going to happen. Your house can burn down. Your car can be stolen. Your feet can be. Someone might die. No, my can happen tomorrow. God, we don't have to worry about tomorrow. When people ask you, what are you going to do tomorrow? If something like this happens, because Amen. 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 What we can do is to trust God with more than tomorrow. We can trust God with our eternity. If you die tomorrow, at least you can trust God that your soul, your spirit will be safe in heaven or after death. What about you? Who are living without God? Of course, today you come, you came to church. But you just live the way you want. Go to peeling the rotandanga. If you can die today, where will your soul be? Where will your spirit be? The Bible encourages us to worry about things like that. Because life it's uncertain. Everything can happen. But at least you must know when you die, your soul, your spirit, it's in the hands of God. Are we together? Now, so it is with the year 2020. Let's give it to Jehovah in the hands of the Lord, the hands of the Father. 2020, it is of God. What will happen? Only Him who knows. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So don't worry about the year and what will happen. The Lord has plans about 2020. And know what will happen. So it is not up to us to know about the future. 
We should not even consult. You know, people really, that is why a lot of people like to hear prophets who will tell them what will happen. Amen, beloved. Amen. The prophetic word is less prophet. It is important. But we should not be worried if we don't have a prophetic word. Because the word of the Lord, it, trust, it tells us that when we trust in the Lord, the Lord will do great and marvelous things. For, for example, Psalms 37 verse 5, it says, Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him. And he shall bring it to pass. Meaning that when you commit your ways to the Lord and you trust in the Lord, the Lord is going to bring something good out of your life. In the future, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 to 6. Listen to what it's saying of what we need to do. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge him. Acknowledge him. In everything, for 2020, acknowledge the Lord. The problem why a lot of things of our lives are not going well is because we are not acknowledging God in our lives. And the Bible says, and he shall direct your path. He shall direct you your path. You want your path to be directed, meaning your life to be directed by God, trust in him. Be a prayerful person. Be a person who reads the word. Be a person who comes for prayers. A person who is closer to God. A person who completely surrender and humble himself to God and acknowledge God in everything they do, whether it's business, whether it's this, whether it's that. God is part of their life. And when you do that, then you know that your future is in the hands of God. And your future, it's a great future. I say your future, it's a great future. Because your future, is in the hands of God. Saying that my life is in God. Future What will happen in the future? I don't know. But I'm unemployed, yes. In 2020, in January, I don't have money, yes. But But I'm unemployed. He knows all the good things things that I need. You are here. You are worried about many things. I want to encourage you. You don't need to worry. Especially this year. Come closer to God. Come closer to Jesus. Seek first. God. The kingdom of God and his righteousness. Do all the things that are right and you're supposed when to. When you do that, I guarantee you, I guarantee 
to you. Your future is great. I say your future. It's wonderful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's bow our heads. Hallelujah. Jesus. You bless the name of the Lord. As we bow our heads, closing our eyes before the Lord. The Lord has spoken to us. Clearly. To your life. Today you have come to church. Maybe they have invited you. And you've been looking at your life and you've been worried. And, uh, and you've been doubting that this is not the kind of life you've been looking for. But today you have heard the good news. That life Life, it's only in Christ Jesus. That you don't need to worry about tomorrow and what will happen because, because the future is in his hands. Can I invite you to, in, to, to invite Jesus to come into your heart? That he may be your Lord and, and your Savior. That you'll be the one who will direct your path that you will be no longer just doing things on your own but but you'll follow the word of the Lord you have come here you are tired with that kind of life of regrets of living with guilt you are tired of that life of pain of stress and worries Today, the word of the Lord came clearly to give you the answer of your problem. Because here at Rock of Salvation, we believe that every problem has a solution. If you want me to pray with you, I'll ask you to humble yourself and raise up your hand wherever you are so that I can pray with you that your life may change. Is up your hand. When I have a Mrs. Santa, I see that hand yes, don't be shy. Just raise it high. You say, pray with me, Muruti. I want my life to change. I want my life to be different. God bless you. Just raise it high. You can wave it this at the back so that I can see you. You say, yes. I want to start a new life in the new year with God so that my, my joy may be full. Wherever you are, you want me to pray for you? Raise up your hand. If you raise your hand, stand up with your feet, please, so that I can see you. Stand up with your feet. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Is there any other person? Just stand up with your feet. You know, 2019 was not a good year for you because you are just living with this God. But now, you feel in your heart enough is enough. Yes, just enough. Your life will never be the same. God bless you. God bless you. I can see you. Yes, is there any other person? Please don't sit down because your life will not help you if you continue to live the same life today repent stand up with your feet God bless you can I ask all of you who stood with your feet please come here in the front we are going to pray for you here. God bless you as you come God bless you as you come just come just come just come God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just come.
regret this step. I'm going to pray with you as I promise. But I'd like you to pray with me as I lead you to the Lord. Then I'll pray with you after. Let us pray. Say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for your love, for sending Jesus to die on the cross because of my sins. I repent today and I surrender my life to you. Forgive me for all my sins. And I ask you, Lord Jesus, to come into my heart and be my Lord and the Savior of my life. I believe with this prayer I'll be saved. I'll be delivered. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving my sins. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for touching these that they have responded in your word by the power of your Holy Spirit. We pray that, Father, you journey with them the work that which you have begun today, you accomplish it in their lives. Totally deliver them from satanic altars, satanic covenants, and anything that which Father will pull them back. We pray that, Father, you seal them by the power of the blood of Jesus and by your Holy Spirit that they may be able, Father, to grow and become like Jesus. Thank you, Father. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, 